the book of Proverbs. Open your Bible to the book of Proverbs. Now, let me, let me give you a warning about tonight. This is practical stuff. It's just practical. Somebody said, well, because it's practical, it's not spiritual. No, it is very spiritual. How many of you know that this is the Word of God? And it is true. It will always be truth. It will never be anything but truth. The Word of God is truth. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going, to, we're going to begin tonight with chapter 8. But I want you to open your Bibles there to, uh, to chapter 7, really. I want to get us up to speed uh, at chapter 7. Now, let me remind you that up to this point, up to where we looked at last week in chapter 7, Solomon is pushing wisdom. He's, he's telling us that that's the most important thing. He's telling us that that's what we need to be running after, not something else, but wisdom, wisdom. And I want to get you up to speed. Look at chapter 7, verse 1. He says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding by thy kinswoman. He's talking about really getting intimate with wisdom. But then he, then he brings in this idea of this other woman. The, he, he calls wisdom a woman, calls her she, brings in this other woman that is, is, is some other kind of thinking other than wisdom. And he ends up chapter 7 by saying, <clears throat> verse 25, Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. That's pretty strong words, isn't it? So, we want to take up with chapter 8, but he's going to continue on in chapter 8 and 9, pushing for wisdom. Several different things about wisdom that we're going to learn this week that we haven't learned. But then we will come to a, a, a different section chapter 10, 11, and 12. And chapter 10 and 11 and 12 have standalone proverbs. What do you mean by standalone proverbs? Uh, they're, they're not in any context of other verses. They are uh, they're, they're proverbs, which means they're comparisons. They are uh, contrasts. They are parables. So when we get to that section, we're not going to be able to spend the time that we'd like to on each one because each proverb will stand on its own. So let's go ahead and get into it in chapter 8. Last week we looked at chapter 4 through 7, Solomon teaching his children. He's still teaching his children. He's still trying to urge his children in the right direction. This week we're going to look at chapter 8 through 12. And we start off chapter 8 looking at the plea and the invitation of wisdom. The plea and the invitation of wisdom. Now he's already told you that there's two ways to go in wisdom and then any other way. So now he, he's, he's, he's ta saying right now that there is a plea given by wisdom. Let's read it. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in of the, at the doors. You notice he's using her and she. She's, wisdom is, is pictured always as... Uh, Feminine. 
I want you to notice what what she does. She cries at the gates at the entry of the county of Minnesota. Verse 4, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, now who are the simple? Those that just don't know any better. They're the ignorant. They're not stupid, they're just ignorant. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Now, that's the plea, that's the cry, that's the invitation of wisdom. And we all know it's true. Wisdom is crying out to us all of our lives. But then we see the words of wisdom, what wisdom is actually saying. <clears throat> Verse 6, Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Many think that this is Solomon saying, I, this is wisdom speaking. Verse 7, for my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse or stubborn in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Afterwards, after you see, after you understand what's going on, wisdom makes sense to you, but not until then. That's what he's saying here. And then he says the desirability of wisdom is great. Beginning in verse 10. Now, you've got to keep in mind, he's, he's convincing his children to follow wisdom. Verse 10, receive my instruction. This is Solomon speaking here now. And not silver and knowledge rather than gold, than choice gold. Verse 11 is a very important verse, and you need to underline this. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Now, what's he, what's he say? He's already said this in, in chapter 3. He said it's, it's better than rubies. Wisdom is better than rubies. And then he says, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Now, I can desire a lot of things. Not y'all, though, right? Y'all don't desire anything, right? You know, you're not you're not wanting stuff, right? It says wisdom's not to be compared with all those things. All the things that you can desire are not to be compared with wisdom. And that is true, and we're going to find out why that's true as we go along. This wisdom is is priceless. Now, in this next section, uh <clears throat> We're going to see the lofty nature of wisdom. Now, wisdom goes from being called she to a personal pronoun, I and me. Wisdom's going to speak, all right? And, 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 and here it is. The lofty nature of wisdom, verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Now, what is prudence? You remember the first week of our study of Proverbs, I gave you a, a glossary of the definitions of these words that you're going to find in, in Proverbs, and you won't find a whole lot of other places in Scripture. Anybody remember what prudence was? Prudence is discretion knowing how to be discreet discreetly doing the right things wisdom says I dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions now, now that that sounds like that you're going to be able to invent some things right but that's not what Scripture is saying. 
Scripture is saying here that you will uncover witty inventions. Now, what's witty inventions? The Hebrew tells us that this, these words that are translated witty inventions are evil plans. Evil plans. So, it should read, you'll be able to uncover evil plans against you. Wisdom says, I dwell with prudence. And I find out knowledge of witty inventions. All right, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the froward mouth do I hate. This is still wisdom talking. Wisdom says, I hate those things. Verse 14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Notice, continuing on in the first person, verse 15, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth. Continuing on with the first person, verse 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Underline verse 18. Verse 18 needs to be underlined. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Now, that's, that's a pretty good statement that wisdom's making here. If you, want, if you want riches, if you want durable riches and righteousness, you need to find wisdom. Verse 19, my fruit. Huh, my fruit is better than gold. Yea, then fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. We all know what fruit is and where it comes from, right? It's, it's the, the produce of something. Wisdom says, my fruit is better than gold. Yea, then fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. Verse 20, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Verse 21 is a good verse. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. So somebody said, well, Brother Gerald, that's just, uh, that's just uh, prosperity preaching. No, that's the Bible. Amen. And that's what wisdom is saying. Wisdom is saying, I do all these things so that I might cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Now, up to this point, we understand why, why he said what he said in chapter 4. He said, find wisdom, and in all thy getting, get knowledge, because wisdom is the principal thing. It is the principal thing. It's all of life. Now, without wisdom, your life, as we're going to see, is going to be not only meaningless, but short without wisdom. All right? Then we come to the eternity of wisdom. Look at verse 22. This is still wisdom talking. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. In other words, before God created anything, wisdom dwelt with God. All right? Wisdom is 
is pictured as a person here. That's why many would say that wisdom was the Holy Spirit dwelling with God. But we're going to find out in this book that wisdom is Jesus dwelling with God. All right. Look at verse, tw verse 23. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the de deep, or the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. I was by him. As one brought up with him. Now notice the last part of that. And I was daily his delight. You mean wisdom was the delight of the Lord? Yes. Yes. Rejoicing always before him. Look at verse 31. Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Wisdom was God's delight, but the delight of wisdom is to go and to be with the sons of men, to give us that wisdom. Now, this would be a good place to define wisdom. We've defined it several times in this study. Somebody tell me what wisdom is. It's not knowledge. Ah, the ability to apply knowledge correctly. How many of you wish that Washington had that capability? A lot of knowledge. You heard of people that they had a lot of book knowledge, but they had no common sense. Well, you can't call it common anymore. And don't call it horse sense because that insults the horse. <laughs> but oh, that they had wisdom. Let me ask you this. Don't you wish that you had had the wisdom that you have now when you were 20, 30, 40 years younger? Oh, yes. It had been wonderful, wasn't it? Some wisdom only comes with age. Other wisdom comes at the school of hard knocks. But the best wisdom of all is that wisdom that you ask of God. And he gives it to you. Amen? Amen. All right. Then we come to the desired blessings of wisdom. The desired blessings of wisdom. Now therefore hearken unto me. O oh, ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. This is still wisdom speaking. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. You will be blessed if you will hear wisdom. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life. Who, who's, he's talking about wisdom. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul. Here's a strange statement. All they that hate me love death. <laughs> you want to die? Hate wisdom. And it'll find you. Death will find you. All right, let's go to chapter 9. 
we're still, he's, he's still talking about wisdom. And he's still encouraging his children to find this thing called wisdom. We find wisdom has prepared her school. Wisdom has, has a college, you know that? And she's built this thing. Look at verse 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Now, what makes me think that this is a school? All the ancient schools were called the house of Tyrannus, the house of Tertullian, the house of Socrates. That's what it was called. But here, she's built her seven pillars. She's hewed out her seven pillars for her college. Now, these are the seven principles that every school had. Seven basic principles. That's what tells me that this is the school of wisdom. Now, when you get to the school, there's going to be a feast. Look at verse 2. She hath killed her beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the high places of the city. And here's what they're crying out. Whoso is simple, if you just don't know things, if you're ignorant, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. What kind of feast is this? This is feast, feasting upon knowledge and how to apply it. <clears throat> Verse 6, forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Look at this, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Now, verse 10 is that verse that you should underline. And this might ought to be a good memory verse for you. We've already found in chapter 1, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But look at verse 10 here in chapter 9. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Stop right there. What is he saying? The fear of the Lord is the kindergarten. Without the fear of the Lord, you have no wisdom. Now, what is the fear of the Lord? Is it being afraid of Him? No. It's not that kind of fear. Is it respect? That involves the fear of the Lord. Uh, holy fear is reverential, respectful worship. It is awe. He's an awesome God. Amen. And you come to God in awe. You come to Him in worship of who He is. I mean... What, how would your life be if you spent 10 minutes a day just in awe of who God is? I mean, this is the one who spoke it all into existence. This is the one that's so great that he can measure the whole universe in the span of his hand, the Bible says. Yet he's so great 
that even the chair you're sitting in is made up of billions of atoms. And each one of them is combined with other atoms to make a molecule, an engine that will keep everything running. And God gives power to that. You can go from the, the most vast thing down to the smallest thing, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the, it's the kindergarten of wisdom. Now notice what else he says in this same regard. <clears throat> Verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now, the wording, the placement of the wording here in the English is unfortunate. It's not the same as the Hebrew. The Hebrew would indicate that once you have an understanding through wisdom, then you can know the Holy One. Then you can know Him. Now it sounds like uh, when you, when you know God, then you have an understanding. No, it's when you have an understanding, then you can know God. When you have an understanding through wisdom, you see, we know about God, right? But here's a great promise. Through wisdom, you can know Him. You can know the Holy One. Amen. Amen. It's good stuff. Look at verse 11. This is, good, this is a good one to, to underline also. Verse 11, For by me, that's wisdom speaking, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Wow. You mean I can live longer if I find wisdom? I don't just say that you can. I say that you will. Because Scripture says it. Verse 12, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. Wow. It's good words. And then we come to something that is kind of the same thing that we've already seen. There was, a, there was the, the wisdom, the woman wisdom, and then there was the, the woman of error or something else, some other thinking. Here we come to this other woman again. And it's the character and error of the school of folly. The character and the error of the school of folly. Look at verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. Now what does that mean? She's a loud mouth. She's always talking. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Now she's got a school too, and she's wanting you to come to it. Yeah. Verse 14, For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. And here's what she says. Something similar to what wisdom says. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. She's saying, don't go the way of wisdom. Hey, we have a better way, and it's a secret way. Now, listen, there's a lot of folks that go in to that school. Amen? Amen? Look at verse 18. But he knoweth not, that one that turns in there, he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Whoa! Stay away from that school. Amen? Amen. Now, we're coming to chapter 10, and chapter 10 
tells us that we have, have, have turned a corner and we're doing something else now. Look at verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. Well, I thought they were all Proverbs of Solomon. Well, these are individual Proverbs. And chapter 10, chapter 11, and chapter 12, are, we find a lot of standalone Proverbs. These are Proverbs of contrast. Now, let me say to you, we can't spend time uh, on each one of them, or we would, uh, we would do less than a chapter a week. All right? So we're going to read, and we're going to make a few comments, but these are, these are self-explanatory proverbs. These are so, so plain that they speak to your heart. All right? Look at verse 1. We find uh, the contrast between a wise and a foolish son. Verse 1. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You ever, you ever see anybody that their son finally hits a home run? Boy, he's happy. He's, he, he's bragging about that. He makes, he makes straight A's on his report card. He wants everybody to know about it. Oh, it makes him so glad and so happy. And you know, but he gets in trouble. And he's silent. The father's silent, but the mother's grieving. Amen? Amen. It's, a, it's, it's a heaviness of his mother, a foolish son. And then we come to the contrast between righteous and wicked treasures. Verse 2, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Verse 3 is a, good, is a good, good word. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. Now what's a slack hand? Lazy. Lazy. What is a slack hand? It, it has to do with laziness. But, but, but you, just, you just don't care. You don't care where your money's going. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. We know that's true. Verse 5, He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. <clears throat> like I said, these are pretty well self-explanatory and they speak to our heart. But this is, just, this is just everyday stuff. And we need to read it. We need to hear it from God's word. And then we come to the contrast between the fame of the just and the wicked. The fame. Verse 6, blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. <laughs> that's that's kind of graphic, isn't it? You think about it. All the, all the criminals throughout the years, you may know their name, but you don't hold them in high esteem at all. But those who are just, those who are righteous, their memory is blessed. And we think, oh, my goodness, if only my children could go that direction, right? That's what he's saying. And then we come to the contrast between the wise and the fools. Now, Scripture can call a man a fool. You can't. Look at verse 8. 
The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. You see this, this phrase, prating fool, you see that in verse 8 and you see it in verse 10. The only two times in Scripture that prating fool is mentioned. But what does that mean? What does prating fool mean? It means a babbling, babbling fool. And it has the connotation of being braggadocious. He's prating as a fool. He's speaking out things. It says, The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. Verse 10, He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow. Now that don't mean you can't wink at your girlfriend. It's... it's it's saying something, I'm saying something to Brother Steve, and then I'll look over at Luke and I'll, I'll wink. Luke will know that I'm lying, but Steve won't. That causes sorrow. But the, a prating fool shall fall. Now why does it say that a prating fool shall fall twice? Anything that's repeated in Scripture it's there for a reason. Why, why will a prating fool fall? Because a prating fool is in pride. Pride goeth before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. He's going to fall because Scripture has declared that he will. Verse 11, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stir up stri stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. Wow. Does the New Testament say love covers a multitude of sin? Amen. Verse 13, in the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. He's going to get a whipping. Right? Void of understanding. Verse 14, wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. There is another instance where the Hebrew wording is reversed in the English. You know, the, the poverty of the poor is their destruction, is what it should read. Verse 16, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. You see how these are just comparisons or contrasts? <clears throat> Verse 17, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. I had a man that I had to quote this to a lot of times. Uh, he, at another church, he was, he was my associate pastor. You could not get him to shut up, no matter what you did. He would not shut up. And one day I just said, I said, uh, Paul, go, go, go and read uh, Proverbs 10, 19. And he came back to me and said, you mean to say I talk too much? I said, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Verse 19, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. In other words, anybody that talks all the time, there's sin back there. 
a scripture. Amen? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. <clears throat> huh, my, my daddy had a saying that was similar to scripture. He said, if you'll just keep your mouth shut, people won't think that you're a fool. <laughs> and that's true. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. I'll underline that one. You know, there, there is the riches of the world that bring sorrow. You know, don't, don't wish to be rich. The rich man has so many worries and so many heartaches if he's made rich by the things of the world. But the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow with it. The riches of the Lord that he blesses you with, don't come with any sorrow. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Verse 23. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. You know, wicked people fear a lot of things. They're scared. They're in terror of a lot of things. And it's going to come on them. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Mm. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Verse 25, as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Verse 26 is an unusual verse. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes... So is the sluggard to them that send him. <laughs> what do, vinegar to the teeth, you want to you get it out of your mouth. It, it, vinegar doesn't taste good, right? And you don't want smoke in your eyes. That's a, that's a bother too, right? Well, the sluggard, you want to get rid of him also. And you send him away. As vinegar... To, to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes so is the slugger to them sluggard that the, to them that send him you're going to send him away he's like vinegar in your mouth he's like uh, he's like smoke in your eyes it's just worrisome so you send him away that's what he's saying here verse 27 this is a good one to underline the fear of the Lord prolongeth days Hmm. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You want to live longer? Fear the Lord. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Wow. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaker speaketh frowardness or perverseness. You know, the, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. You know what's right to say and what's, what's wrong to say. You know, some people have no filter on their mouth. They don't know what to say. And they say things wrong and they say, well, I didn't know that I should say that. You know, being in business for so many years 
I, I would get into a, a crowd and, and that somebody would just be cussing up a, a blue streak. And they'd look around and see me and they'd, oh, Brother Gerald, I'm sorry. I didn't know, I didn't know you were here. And I said, it's not, it's not an insult to me, but it's an insult to God. God hears you. Well, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to say that. Well, you just told me that you're not righteous. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. But the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness or perversity. Uh, do you worry about cussing sometimes? When you... When you hurt yourself, do, does, does something slip out of your mouth that shouldn't be there? Do you say a bad word? Driving down the road, somebody cuts you off. Yeah, somebody cuts you off going down the road. <laughs> do you say a bad word? Well, let me say something to you. If it's not in you, it won't come out of you. You should never worry about whether I'm going to cuss or not. You know, because if it's, if it's in you, yeah, when you're bumped, it'll come out. But if it's not in you, it won't come out. The righteous know what is acceptable. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. That's, that's a good word right there. All right, chapter 11. Wow, we got to hurry. We got chapter 11 and chapter 12, which is Proverbs of observation now these proverbs of observation we all have seen these things and we have observed what happens and we find observations about the results of moral virtues the results verse 1 a false balance is abomination to the Lord but a just weight is his delight. Now, what, what's he saying a false balance? What's he saying? Somebody said this morning, it's like putting your thumb on the scale when you're selling something. Yeah. It can be that, but, but, but that, back then they weighed things with balances. You put a weight on one side, and then you put the thing that was to be purchased on the other side, and you kept adding the weight until it came up even. And that was, that was how much it weighed. And you, you'd, you'd, you'd buy by the weight. Well, it was a practice in those days to, to have the weights <laughs> that were heavier than they ought to be. So that you would have to, you'd have to pay more than what you would normally pay. Scripture says that's an abomination to the Lord. That's cheating. By the way, all cheating is an abomination to the Lord. Verse 2, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. Mm. But with the lowly is wisdom. Verse 3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. In other words, your bank account won't help you. You're going to die anyway. But righteousness delivers you from death. <clears throat> Verse 5, the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectations shall perish. In other words, his, uh, what he was longing for, that will, that will be destroyed when he dies. And the hope of unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Now, this, was a, this is a hard verse to kind of picture. 
But it's, it's like this. The, the righteous are in trouble. And the Lord delivers them out of their trouble. But he's not going to deliver the wicked out of the trouble. The wicked comes along and inherits the trouble that the Lord delivered the righteous out of. Amen? I've seen that happen. Verse 9, And hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. In other words, when, when, it, when it goes well for the righteous, everybody's happy. And when the wicked die, everybody's happy. <coughs> By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. But it is overthrown by the mouth of of the wicked he that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor but a man of understanding holdeth his peace a talebearer revealeth secrets but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter how many times has somebody told you something and said don't, don't, don't tell this and you say oh I won't and you go to the next person and you say, hey, let me tell you something about it. And you can't tell anybody I told you this. <laughs> A faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Verse 14, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Verse 15, he that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it. If you... If you Cosign with a stranger, you're going to hurt over that. And he that hateth suretyship is secure or sure. If, if, you, if you don't like the idea of having to sign for somebody, then you're secure. Verse 16, a gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, and he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. You ever heard the saying, what goes around comes around? Amen. If you're merciful, you're doing good to your own soul because you'll find mercy. But if you're cruel, that's going to find you too. It'll come around and get you also. The cruelty will. <coughs> Verse 18. <coughs> the wicked worketh a deceitful work. But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. They that are froward... Are they are of a forward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Boy, I want to be a delight to the Lord, don't you? Amen. I don't want to be uh, forward. I don't want to be stubborn of heart. That's an abomination to the Lord. Verse 21, Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Now, verse 22 is one of my favorite verses. <laughs> As a jewel of gold and a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Mm. You know, it, just wasn't, it just wasn't, it's just not right to put a gold ring in a, in a pig's nose. Just don't look right. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just not the right thing to do, right? But that's like a beautiful woman that has no discretion. That's not right either. That's an ugly thing. A pig with a gold ring, that's ugly. And a beautiful woman without discretion, that's ugly also. 
Verse 21, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered a jewel, a, as a jewel of gold and a swine snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Verse 23, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Now verse 24 and 25 through and verse 26 is, is good scripture. And it is, it's the word of God and it is true. Look at what he says in verse 24. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Now what's he saying? There's, there's those that just give. They give. They scatter abroad what they have. And yet the, they increase. I mean, they have more. But then there's those that hold back for a rainy day more than is meat. Yet that tends to poverty. That's strange, isn't it? It seems like now if we just save up, uh, we'd have something. Scripture says that tends to poverty. To give, that increases. Verse 25, the liberal soul, now it's not talking about the liberal Democrats. It's talking about those that are that are generous is the word here. The generous soul shall be made fat. Some of us are very generous, evidently. <laughs> but, you know, the idea is you could not be fat unless you were rich. You just didn't, you couldn't afford the food to get fat. The liberal soul, the, the generous soul, shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Hmm. Verse 26. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about during a time of famine. During a time when there's not much food. And someone is going to hoard it all. He'll be cursed. But if he sells it, the people will bless him. Verse 27, He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief it shall come to him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Ooh. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. Verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Oh, you've heard that scripture quoted in relation to soul winning? It's true. It's the word of God. The fruit of the righteous is is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be re recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Now, chapter 12. And you guessed it. It's more of the same. Continued observations and comparisons. And we're going to just read these, and we're not going to make a lot of comments because we're out of time. Y'all want to hear it? Say amen. amen. All right, let's, let's read them. Look, look uh, moral virtues and wicked vices is what he's talking about. Verse 1, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. You're just a brute if you will not be corrected. Verse 2, A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. 
A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. That is absolutely true. Women, be a virtuous woman, and you'll be a crown to your husband. But if you make him ashamed, it's, it's just rottenness in his bones. Verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood. In other words, they're talking about killing someone so they can have the money. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of, of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. Even though people hate you and you have enough money to have a servant, you're better off than the, the guy that uh, you're, you're always bragging about yourself and how good you are and you honor yourself and then you don't even have enough money to buy food. Verse 10, A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Mm. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. You see how all of these are standalone? But they're very, very poignant. They're very true. Verse 12, The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Verse 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You know, a, a fool thinks that he's always right. Can't be corrected, can't, can't listen to counsel, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Verse 16, a fool's wrath is presently known but a prudent man covereth shame. <clears throat> he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Ooh. You know anybody that speaks like that? Like knives, like the piercing of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth is shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. That's the third time we've heard this in Proverbs. But they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaim foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. In other words, the, the, the slothful, they will pay. Verse 25, heaviness is in the heart of man. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it to stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. Isn't that true? Yes. Verse 26, The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. Verse 27 and 28, The slothful man roasteth not which he took in hunting. <laughs> you will know if you're slothful or not. Did you kill something when you was out hunting? Did you eat it, or did you just let it rot? The slothful man roast, roasteth not that which he took in honey, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. 
Everything a diligent man has, he's going to put to good use. Verse 28, in the way of righteousness is life, mm. and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Hallelujah. We're through. <laughs> a lot of reading, but you, you have to admit Proverbs speaks directly to the heart.